From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. John, this message I found when I came in... Yeah, Pete, somebody took a couple of shots at your $50,000 client, Mike Flynn. Well, is he... Will he die? From the looks of things last night, he may pull through, in spite of the two slugs in him. I hope so. Do you know who did it? No idea, but I'm going to try to talk to him. Have you talked to the beneficiary? Not yet. First, I want whatever information I can get from Mike, if he's still alive. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New York, New York. Attention, Peter Branson, Lakeside Life and Casualty Insurance Company. Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the indestructible Mike matter. Expense account item six, 55 cents. Taxi to the neighborhood of the Glad Hand Rescue Mission, where Daddy Bill, a general fact totem, had promised to take the best of care of Michael Jeremiah Flynn. He'd given Mike a room to himself on the second floor, and what a room. What wallpaper was left hung in shreds from the cracked plaster. The shades on the dirty windows were tattered and torn. A single bare fly-speck light bulb hung on a cord from the ceiling. The floor was bare, and the only furniture was a battered chest of drawers, an ancient washstand with a cracked pitcher and bowl, and a sagging iron bed on which old Mike Flynn lay. Come in. Come in here. Hi. You must be the man who helped me into the mission last night. Yeah, yeah. My name's Johnny Dollar. Come up to see how you're making out. Well, I'm much obliged to you, Johnny. I'm real obliged to you. Well, how are you feeling this morning? Me? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I've never felt better. <laughs> sit down. Sit down. Well, what did the doctor that Daddy Bill got for you have to say? The doctor for me? Oh, now, Johnny, you must be joking. <laughs> joking? After you had a couple of slugs tear through you? Here, let me help you. Oh, you want to see him? Sure, sure. Now, wait a minute. Now, just look for yourself here. Ah, you see? See? They just went through my side here, in the front, and out the back. Holy. Oh, see, aren't they healing up nicely? Well, that one couldn't have missed your heart by more than three inches. But it did. <laughs> yes, it did. Not nearly so close as this scar, though. What? You want to see this scar? Look at it right here. Hey, was that a bullet wound, too? No, no, oh, no, Johnny. That was just an old ice pick or something. Huh? Somebody in the crowd during that fire down at the battery line. Oh, wasn't that a beautiful fire, Johnny? Did you see that? Oh, but what did these slugs do to you inside? Oh, you must be... To me? Oh, not a thing. Well, I'm so durable. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say there was another attempt on your life last week? No, 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 of course not. Just an accident like those shots last night. You think that was an accident? Huh? <clears throat> Why, don't you? Do you know who fired them? Oh, Johnny, I haven't the least idea. Where did it happen? I was right here in the mission, and I didn't hear any shots. Oh, dear, no. I was down near my private place. Where's that? Where's that, Mike? Well, I'll tell you, Johnny. It's this way. Daddy Bill and the others here at the mission are real nice to me. Oh, they're real nice. You can see by this lovely private room that they fixed up for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, And they'd like for me to stay here all the time. I guess Daddy Bill thinks if I'm here most of the time, I might not drink so much and keep getting into those kind of... Say, do you ever enjoy a little drink, Johnny? Well, on occasion. But you were going to tell me... Oh, here. Now, I've got a little bottle tucked under the mattress here, Sam. Ah! Ah, here it is. <laughs> what under the sun is that? That 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 color, that pink. Yeah, that's my favorite. That pink. A straight whiskey costs so much. Even when I have the money now and then. You know something? I like a little bit more kick in mine. I guess it's kind of a hangover from the prohibition days. <laughs> so I mix a little kick into it. Here, Johnny, I want you to try this. Well, I uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you'll like this. Oh, oh what a wallop. Well. <laughs> What the sap, Bill? Yes, what that sterno. Oh. That's what I add to it, just a little bit of sterno. <laughs> Mike, this stuff will kill you. Oh, I've been drinking that for years. Look at me, the picture of health. Oh, mm, Mike, just take listen a little to me. Sip. I'm going to get ah. you a doctor. <laughs> no, no, you're not. I won't stand for it. But you've been shot. Oh, no. You just gave me a little twinge or two last night, but now I feel fine. Well, you fell flat on your face when you came in here. Oh, now listen, Johnny. 
Don't you tell Daddy Bill, but I'm afraid it wasn't the bullets last night. It was uh, <laughs> overindulgence. Oh, brother, I give up. <laughs> no, no, don't say that, Johnny. <laughs> oh, all right, then how did it happen? Well, I was on my way back here when the car drove by. Oh? Yeah, it sounded to me like a couple of backfires or two, but <laughs> then I felt this little uh, sting on my side. And that's it. And you call that an accident? Well, of course. The men in the car were probably just having a little friendly eye. How argument. many men? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. I think there were only two of them. I waved at them. What kind of a car? Black. Well, what make, could you tell? Well, it was shiny and it was new. See, I wish I had a car, Johnny. Well, look, Mike, I'm on a level with you. Oh? I'm an insurance investigator. Insurance? Well, my... Well, say, that's interesting, John. Say, let's have a little drink on that while you tell me no, about that. No, 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 thanks. <clears throat> and there isn't much to tell, except that I'm here to try to save your life, among other things. Well, no, I don't understand. I'm getting along all right. I, I've been living it up here in the Bowery for years. Maybe you were getting along okay until you took out that big insurance policy. Yeah, oh, say, wasn't that nice of Mr. Cosgray? Now, all my life, I wanted to have some life insurance. You know, it gives you a kind of feeling of importance and security. So when he came down here one night and I told him that... Why, oh, say, his eyes just lit up and he said he was going to make me a present of some insurance. Who is this Cosgrave? How much do you know about him? Oh, oh, he's wealthy. I know that much about him. He has a beautiful car and a chauffeur. Does he come down here often? Oh, now and then. Just now and then. Why? Uh, uh, now, I've often wondered about that, Johnny. So one time I asked Daddy Bill, and he said that years ago when Mr. Cosgrave was young, he came to the mission for help, and Daddy Bill gave it to him. Well, what does he do when he's here? Oh, he brings some food for the brothers. Uh, the brothers, that's what Daddy Bill calls us. And some money, and he always gives jobs to a couple of men who've drifted in here. What kind of jobs, Mike? You know, that's something I don't know. You see, they never come back here again. Maybe it's because they can't. What's that? Uh, what'd you say, Johnny? Mike, I'm going to give it to you straight. To me, the whole thing smells to high heaven. To me, this Cosgrave sounds like a racketeer. Oh, no, I may no, be no. wrong. I'll know better when I meet him. And I intend to do that as soon as possible. But right this minute, I bet that he comes down here for only one purpose. To recruit help for some sort of illegal job. Oh, that's a terrible thought, John. When he heard you say you'd like insurance, he jumped at the chance. And why not? Let you name him as beneficiary and then have you knocked off. Oh, no, John. That ice pick in your side was no accident, Mike. No more than the shots at you last but night. But he's been so nice. Sure, of course he has. He can afford to. After all, your body's worth $50,000 to him. And that's what you're going to be, Mike, just a body. Unless I can do something about oh, it. Oh, such a nice man, too, really. How has he been getting this money to you? In an envelope. By mail? Usually it's just left here at the mission. By whom? Well, nobody ever seems to know. It's just a plain envelope. It's dropped in the mail. No return like... address? No, 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 no. But I'm sure it comes, Mr. Cosgrave. Uh, say, come to think about it. Oh. Say, there was one due yesterday. Every Monday, you know. But Daddy Bill said it didn't arrive. Well, maybe it'll be here today. And you know something? I'd like to see it delivered. <laughs> no, you and I. You can't kid me, Johnny. You'd like to see who delivers it. <laughs> oh, say, why don't we go downstairs and wait and see? No, easy there, Mike. You're a sick man. <laughs> oh, you can't... stop talking that way, sick. Up we go. Oh, no, you can't. In all it. right. It, it, it. Here, let me give you a hand. No, 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 no. I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh, say, look at that. Look at that. Daddy Bill left my shoes here by the bed for me. Oh, oh brother, now, now I've seen everything. I put my shoes in and I think that's kind of there. Ah, there. Now, there we are, all dressed. I don't know how you do it, Mike. Uh, 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 uh. Shall we go downstairs? Sure. Uh, Lead the way. All right, here. Well, the envelope should be there because it always comes in the morning when there's nobody here. <laughs> you know, when Daddy Bill's out shopping and... Just the door to the assembly room is open for any poor lost soul who wants to come in, wait for the chow line to open. Well, we'll see, we'll see. And then we'll go to my private place. <laughs> you see, there are two things I like, Johnny. Yeah? Solitude and crowds of people. <laughs> oh, look at that, Johnny. Look at that. <laughs> There's mail there by the door. <laughs> you see? Ah. Uh, Here's my envelope. And my name's on it, too. Wait, Mike. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Ah, uh, uh, you see there, Johnny? A $20 bill. Whee! Let me have that envelope <laughs> for possible proof. Oh, yes, yes. Here you are, Johnny. Now we can go out, you and I. We can have a real... Well, now, Johnny, look at that. 
A package for me, too. Hey, easy, Mike. Let me have that. No, 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 no. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> An infernal machine or something. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking. But you didn't hear it gurgle. <laughs> oh. Well, look at it, Johnny. Well, joyous be one for you and one for me. Easy, Mike. I want to carry this one in the wrapping paper. <laughs> oh, fingerprints, huh? That's right, Mike. I'm going to take you back upstairs and lock you in your room. Uh-huh. You're to stay there. Let nobody in, not even Daddy Bill, until I get back oh, here. Oh, but Do Johnny... what I say. And just remember that I'm trying to save your life. <laughs> Item 7, 270, cab fare uptown to the 18th Precinct Station. The lab boys took over three hours while Randy Singer and I talked about cases that we'd handled together in the past. I asked him to dig up whatever he could for me on John Wesley Cosgrave, the man named as beneficiary of Mike's insurance policy. This he promised to do. Finally, a slim, intelligent-looking lieutenant walked in and handed Randy a neatly typed report of the lab's findings in connection with the liquor bottle and envelope I'd given them. Hmm. Mm. Well, Randy? Uh, not much, I'm afraid, Johnny. Apparently, the only prints were those made by the old man and you. Proof that somebody's been pretty darn careful not to be identified. Yeah, that's what... Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Seal on the bottle had been tampered with, so the lab boys opened it. That bottle contained enough wood alcohol to kill an army. Now, if that old boy drinks the way you Good say... Good Lord, Randy. See you later. Item 8, 10 bucks even. Taxi fare and tip back to the Glad Hand Rescue Mission. I don't know how the driver did it, but he skinned through practically every red light on the route. And I soundly cursed myself for having left Mike with the other bottle. The place was apparently still empty when I pounded up the stairs to the second floor in Mike's room. At least he kept his room locked as ordered. Mike! Mike! Mike, are you all right? Mike! He was stretched out on the old iron bed, his face drawn even whiter than the pillow on which his head rested. The half-empty bottle lay where he dropped it on the floor beside him. And I could have sobbed for the stupid, careless, unthinking way in which I... Ooh. Mike! Johnny, what a hangover this is going to be. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the would-be beneficiary of Indestructible Mike turns out to be a very interesting and dangerous man. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.